Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this POS system uh, wherein you can just tap the photo and then it goes to the other window. Tap this and then it saves. When you save, it goes to the settlement and then you can settle and then um, you can generate the receipt. So ideally, if you have a small business, you can use this setup. And just please note that this is uh, a single user. So in short, you cannot use this if you have a multiple user which is using this app. Alright? So I will show you how to create this uh, application. And I also uploaded this a month ago, uh, the introduction of this. Now, I will show you how to create this. So first, let's create our database. So in our database, the first thing that we need to create is what are those items that we are selling. So I will just name this tab items. So on the items, we're going to have a column, which is the item, item ID. Then we're going to have also a, let's say, a category. Then we're going to have an item name. And we're going to have the price, unit price. And of course, we're going to have the photo, the photo of the product. All right. And then we have to insert this one, which is the quantity or in short is QTY. So this is uh, this column is useful later on. So I'm gonna just highlight highlight it a bit and <clears throat> put some something. Then the rest of this uh, column I will just um, delete that. All right. So now we have already our first. Um, table which is the items if you see here so this is the item section so I'm gonna upload this to the I'm gonna create an app so I'm gonna just name this let's say POS v2 okay so I'm gonna use this time Google Sheet, or you can use as well the database. I'm going to look for the spreadsheet that I created. So the title is this. <clears throat> then I'm going to upload the... Right, just wait until it loads all right so let's review the table and uh, so in this uh, table uh, the key column will be the item ID and then next one will be the label will be the item name and then the photo as well so in the category let's say I'm gonna just have two categories here let's say uh, fruits and vegetable or whatever is the category let's say I'm gonna just have um, I'm gonna keep it as a num let's say uh, this is fruits and say this is vegetable okay i think that's all we have then keep it as a drop down so this is the category the item name you can keep it as a name or you can keep it as a text so i would prefer a text unit price we can change it into let's say three decimals and usd keep it like that then image i mean photo is an image number is in quantity it's fine so it looks all good I'm gonna just 
All right. I'm going to just save it. And then we're going to create a view for this. So I'm going to first create a view. I think it's already generated. So it's here. So we want to set up like this. So the best way to have like this is we can choose a deck view and then item so i'm gonna just keep it in reference and then i'm gonna sort it by item name which is okay group by category i don't need to have a count then the main image is the photo primary header is the item name which as you can see and then secondary maybe we can use the unit price all right and then I keep it as a none all right and then I'm gonna create a new view and this time it will be a dashboard type we're in this side so it's a dashboard type I'm gonna let's say I'm gonna keep it as items uh, no this is a let's say I'm gonna name it, it as like that then I'm gonna keep it in the middle then I'm gonna add an entry so this time we have only one entry and we'll save so now we have this uh, view so we don't have any more uh, we don't have any items right now and uh, we need to add some items on it so we have to display the uh, plus sign so we have an option here and then look for the uh, dashboard show primary action all right so now we have this uh, the the plus button now we can add an items for this example I want to try add an item so all right so category let's say fruits name let's say apple then unit price let's say three i'm gonna add a photo and then in desktop <clears throat> i think i have a okay so i'm gonna add this and that's it so another one we don't want to show this quantity guys so i'm going to hide this uh because this one is useful later on for some of our actions so i'm gonna hide the quantity so to hide that i can just uh, go here and then i'm gonna just uh, show if uh, i'm gonna use context or not in context i'm gonna use uh, view type <clears throat> view type which is form okay okay or i can simply say uh, context view type is not equals to form okay so we can use that instead so i'm gonna i'm gonna just use this so this is the expression that I use. So this uh, this column, I don't want to show it if we are in form view. See, we are adding items. And also we don't want to display this uh, um, the items. We don't want to display the um action bar okay so i'll explain like that then i'm gonna add items category let's say fruits item name let's say what we have here i'm gonna try let's say orange i'm gonna just add three example and then let's say i'm gonna keep it the same price as you can see you cannot see anymore the quantity and then last one i'm gonna add let's say this is then let's say i'm gonna keep it all the same price okay so this is our sample and i'm gonna save it 
So now we have to add our, uh, on the other side, which is our cart. Let's say, you know, once you click this, it, and then you put a quantity, it goes the items here. So we need to add a view for that. So then we have to go back to our database. So in our database, uh, we have to add a table. You can name it uh, as you like. So in this example, I'm going to name it as, let's say, sales. So this is the sales, for example. So in the sales, we have to include this column, which is, I will name it as status. So the status, there are only two options. So it's either um, paid or not paid. Or we, we will do like that. Then we're going to have a date. Let's say date and time. Or let's say I'm going to just make it simple, date date time then we're gonna have the item ID then item name then we're gonna have let's say we don't want to include the photo so it's an optional uh, because in this example um, I'm adding actually I am I include the photo so I don't think this is necessary so better we will not include the photo, we can just keep the item name. So item name, then what we're going to do next is, let's say the unit price. And then we have the quantity. Then we're going to have the subtotal. Then we're going to have the invoice number invoice number then we're gonna have the table row key i'm gonna just keep it say an id and then the rest of this i can just delete it okay mm. so if you have a small business and you're looking for the simple pure system that you can monitor your sales so you can follow this instruction and start using it for free you can use it for free actually and then I already added this and then what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna upload this in AppSheet and we're gonna add a table and the table name should be if I refresh the this app editor it should display the this table sales <clears throat> Mm -hmm. It's not display and refresh this. Mm -hmm. It's not showing. <laughs> okay. All right. Then I can, uh, we will add it manually then. All right. Let's add another, another table. So sample apps and so what is the name of the table? The name of the table is sales. All right, and then let's review the column. I mean the table, which is the table for the sales. All right, in the table for sales, our key column here will be the, will be the ID. Okay, we'll keep it as a key column and I don't want to show it and I'm gonna place an initial value which is unique I'm gonna just use unique unique ID all right then what we're gonna do next is <clears throat> we're gonna have the invoice number which is we will calculate uh, later on and then subtotal so for the subtotal, what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a. Uh, I'm gonna keep it as a price, for example, and I'm gonna keep it three digits, decimal value, and then maybe the sign is this, and we're gonna have a apply a formula. So this is for the subtotal. Uh, what we're gonna do is just 
the unit price so unit price and then multiply by quantity all right so that's that's all then the next is the quantity so we'll keep it as a number then unit price is unit price and then the name this should be automatically generated let's say if the customer or i mean the user select the item id of the product so item name and unit price should be automatically um, generated so we're gonna use a lookup expression here in the unit price yeah all right so unit price we're gonna use um, lookup so lookup which table uh, which um, column that we're gonna we need to look up so this row so we're gonna look up this row the item ID how I name the item ID okay item ID then which table we need to look up so we're gonna look up if you go to a data explorer we're gonna look up in items tables so the items then which column we need uh, we're gonna look up in the items so we will look up in item ID so I'm gonna insert it so item ID and then what is the result column that we need so we need the unit price so i'm gonna just copy this then right it should be all good i'm gonna just uh uh what you call this uh paste it in the item name as well uh it will be the same uh the same formula the only thing that we need to change is the what you call this the this one uh sorry item name i think we don't need to put it because it will be an action later on so we will just keep it set aside later on we're gonna do that then item id item id it will be keep it like that date and time um we're gonna use uh now or yeah now we're gonna use now expression because this is the date and time and then the rest will be that's all yep so invoice number uh we need to have the invoice number as well because you know when you when for example doing like this you go to settlement we need to create like a serial number here anyway this uh, this setup or this POS setup, it's a single user, so there is no um, there is no way that you to user using this. So we we can have a invoice number which is a serialized invoice number. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna have the invoice number. So we're gonna upload or create first the table for the invoice number. So I'm gonna just create here and then invoice number i'm gonna just rename it so i'm gonna just put let's say um invoice invoice um number or let's say invoice only then here we're gonna have invoice all right then i wanted to start my invoice i wanted just to use a very simple invoice number i just wanted to use like numbers so i want to start let's say 2023 then one two three four let's say five so this is the invoice number for example okay so i'm gonna just um, keep it a bit and <clears throat> i think that's all Okay, then I'm gonna just remove the rest of it. Okay, so now this is my invoice number. I'm gonna add this to uh, to app sheet.
ओके सो इन इन वॉइस नंबर वी डोंट नीड टू क्रिएट अ व्यू फॉर दिस um so it will be number type but without a separator and then i think that's that's all we have and then let's go back to our sales invoice number so in the sales invoice number this should be auto uh, generated i'm going to place this in i can place it here in in, in app formula or you can place it initial value but i would prefer to put it in the initial uh, value then what we're gonna do i'm gonna apply an expression here max um, invoice then that is the table name what is the column or the label name so the column name is invoice then what we're gonna do is plus one so every time you're adding a sales let's say you, your invoice now is as you can see here, your invoice now is 20035. The next, the next one will be 23006. All right. So this is, I'm going to just keep it that. And then since we're done for this, um, we're going to create a view in our, for the second window. So let's go to the UX. And uh, first, let's create a slice. So a slice, it's very helpful in this setup. So I'm going to create a slice and then slice, new slice. Let's say I'm going to name this, let's say cart. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I need to put this. Then I'm going to name this, let's say cart. Then we have just to put the, um, what they call this, the um source table the source table will be the sales then what is the row filter conditions in this so the row filter condition in this um as you can see our table structure for sales we have the status here so what will happen is if there is like um a new order let's say you are uh, you're putting a request i mean you're uh, you're adding an order then if if it goes um the status will be empty so we will not put anything and then later on we're going to create an action to put a status something here, let's say paid if it's if the status is empty i mean not nothing here then we will display the items i mean we will display the row so i'm gonna just use a row filter condition here let's say um if it's empty then we will use the is blank is is blank uh let's say is blank status so the status okay so this is the row filter condition we have all right then uh we will only allow here uh, we can uh, we can allow delete we can allow uh only updates so updates remove this and then let's create a view for the uh, from this slice. So the view will be I'm gonna create a view, and then I'm gonna choose the slice that uh, that I created. So the view is uh, cart, okay. And then I'm gonna just uh, name this with the same cart then i'm gonna just keep it as a table view this is a table view wherein we can summarize the how much is the total value for the sales so i will just create a table view then i'm gonna keep it in reference type then i'm gonna just uh, group it by let's say by this one and then we're going to have a group aggregates. So the group aggregates will be the sum of the total amount. Sum subtotal, then the column order. What I want here is just item name, unit price, quantity, and subtotal. So that's what I need only. So the item name, unit price, quantity, and subtotal. So that's all I need. Then... Um, that's all. 
and then I'm gonna add this in the <clears throat> I'm gonna add this in the dashboard view so here in our dashboard I'm gonna insert this and that's all so in the dashboard view if you're using a mobile you can actually enable this and then it's uh, it's going to see this is the mobile version so if you're not enabling this use tabs in mobile it will end up like like this let's say <clears throat> see so if you're using if you're using a mobile so it, it it's like a tab so once the items you you click it goes here so this is so we can enable this one all right in this example we have so we need to create a trigger or an action you know once you click this the image or the row it goes to the cart okay and also we need to create an action like its pop-up like how many or the order quantity so we need to do that an action so we need to create an action for that so now as you can see when once I click it goes to the to the picture so we don't want to do that right so once we click we want these items to go here so the first uh, thing we need to do is to create an action in the items items table so the items table the first action that we need to create uh, we can create first let's say this uh, this this pop-up or we can create first the the picture so <clears throat> so the picture uh, here we can create a behavior new action and then the action will be I'm sorry um it will be add new uh, add new row to another table using values of this row so we're going to use this so the purpose of this action is whenever you click the photo it copies the data here i mean the details and put it to the another table which is this card okay so i'm gonna just name this add to cart okay then here is the target uh, table the target table we have is the sales all right and we don't want to actually to display this so i'm gonna just hide it or um, do not display all right <clears throat> so what are those um, uh, columns that we need to copy so the first thing that we need to copy is of course the item ID so the item ID I can just uh, click this item ID and then um, the what you call this the item name so the item name I can just uh, item name so it will be the same item name okay and then we need to copy as well the quantity so the quantity will be quantity and column will be quantity but that's all so I am going to save this and let's create another action so this is once we already have an action that once you click this and then it goes to the cart and then uh, you need to input how many items all right so we need to create this input so to create this uh, we're gonna use the expression called input guys so same table in the items table I'm going to add an, an action so I'm gonna just um, name this uh, action let's say um, input quantity so input quantity is what is the record of the table so for a record of this table it will be the same in the items so we have just to set this so set the value columns of this row we have to choose the quantity and we have to apply the expression called input so input I'm gonna just type input then what is the column the column is um, quantity so QTY 
so and then I want it I want to pop up it as empty so I'm gonna just keep like that all right then once you're done for that we don't need to display this as well so I'm gonna just appearance do not display then I'm gonna just save okay so that is the second action that we created in items table all right then the next action that we have to create is as you can see in our database the items there is a quantity actually here so there is a quantity here once you uh, once you put something here let's say two it's also saved in the database whatever is the items it goes to two also here so we need an uh, we need an action to clear this once you save so we need to create an action that um, deletes the the quantity once it's saved so we have to create another action in the, the same table the items table so I'm gonna just name this where's the new action um, set QTY to zero okay I'm gonna just name like that then the same uh, set value columns of this row and just select the quantity and keep it like that and then the same time um, do not display so that's the third action we created in items table and then the last action that we need to create in uh, in the items uh, table is we gonna now we need to uh, group this action so we have to combine all of this action so to combine this action we have to like a sequence of action so we're gonna create another action we already have here so as you can see this is the sequence one this is the, the first action then once you put the quantity that is the second action and once you save that is the third action so the third action is like when you are saving it deletes the number so there are three action involved in this in this movement so like one okay one two three so there are three actions so we have to combine this three action then here I'm gonna create an action and then I'm gonna just name this group items group so let's say I'm gonna just name like that then here the record list table will be the same and there is what we call group execute sequence of action then the first thing that we need to do is <clears throat> before before we copy we need first to capture the quantity so without the all right so we need to capture so <clears throat> the first action is input quantity second is copy uh, add to cart or copy and then set quantity to zero <clears throat> and then the appearance will be do not display all right let's save and let's go to the all right now uh, let's go back to our UX and go to the cart table here so in the cart table there is what we called a behavior action here so here whenever the user select the select the uh, the cart what you wanted to I mean in the item sorry not not in cart in the items so whenever uh, user tap the photo or the row uh, what you wanted to what you wanted to do so here in the items so this is a deck view so we're gonna have uh, we will have an option to put some events action here in the behavior so when the row is selected what you want to do so I want items groups action then let's try if it's copied to the to the cart all right <clears throat> so let's try so Apple as you can see I want to save 
So it's automatically copied here. Okay, I want banana. One. All right, I want orange. So this is the purpose of that action. So now, since we already have this action, we have to create some like, uh, like, an, like an action here to connect this into a settlement. Okay? So, but before we do that, let's create first our payments table. So, this is a very simple payments. Um, we don't need to... This is a single item payment. So, this we can do... Let's make it very simple. So, in the payments, I'm going to just... Um, so, we're going to have here the invoice number then we will have a total sales amount total sales then if you want to display the change we can display the change as well so in the change okay we have to display then what we're gonna do is i think that's that's all we need and then if you allow edits in the pdf we can add later on an edit so this time i will just Keep it like this so and also we need to have the payment type as well so i think we need to have sorry um voice number or let's delete this one okay sorry i got so first we're gonna have a date and then we're gonna have a time i would like to separate it then we're gonna have the payment type then we're gonna have the amount let's say amount paid then invoice number then next is we're gonna have the total sales this one you can customize by your own yeah then what we're gonna do have next is we can display the change as well that's all and think um that's all So this, uh, if you wanted to allow edit, so we can add another column here and name it as version, but that will be later on. Mm -hmm. All right. So since we already have this, I'm going to add this in AppSheet and uh, payments table. It's already here. I can just click and then I can just um, review the table and see what we have. All right, so view columns. So in the payments table, uh, the row key here it will be the invoice number. Okay, so this is the invoice number and keep it as a number. Uh, invoice number, invoice number, keep it as a number, number type. And uh, it should be without a separator. So that will be the key column. And uh, we need also to have the auto compute here. And since this is a key column, we cannot use an app formula. So we're going to use only in initial value. So the initial value, guys, it will be the same formula what we're going to use in here from sales. So you can see there's an invoice number here. I'm going to just copy this and paste it to the payments and to the invoice number here. Okay, and then uh, since this is a key column, I don't want them to edit this. So I'm going to just place an editable if expression here. Let's say if this is blank, they can edit. If not, then they cannot edit. Um, I'm going to just use this. All right. And then um, we have to review some of the columns here in the payments. So change or uh, total sales amount so, or total sales, this will be uh, up formula. Okay. So in total sales, we can just simply use the sum expression, sum select. So I'm going to just use here sum select. So we're going to select which table. So the table, which is the sales. 
and then which column that we need to to sum so let's go to the sales and let's sum the subtotal okay let's sum the subtotal and we're in um, invoice invoice number is equals to um, this row that invoice number okay that's all that should be all good and then for the change we can just simply use a formula here uh, change it should be a price type can I just adjust this okay this is will be price and then it will be here okay and then for the formula I'm gonna just use uh, let's say uh, total sales where is the total sales minus how much your customer paid okay so that should be good then we have to apply as well a, a show if expression here so we don't want to show the the change if there is no change correct so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna apply this so if the amount paid is um, less than Oh, sorry it's it's more than the total sales then we will show then let's save all right since we already created this I'm gonna create a view for the payments wherein our sales will be will be there as you can see in this sample uh, payments are here so the payments I can see all the transactions for today and what are those orders they in each transaction so I'm gonna create a view for the payments so I'm gonna just keep it in uh, let's say in in the menu new view and then create new view let's say I'm gonna just uh, name this let's say um, payments or let and then I'm gonna change this to payments and I'm gonna just keep it in the table view and I'm gonna just group it by let's say um, date and then there is a uh, group aggregates so I'm, I wanted to know how much my daily sales so I'm gonna just sum total sales and then what are those column that I wanted to sh uh, to see similar to this I wanted to view let's say the date and say the time and then I need to see the invoice number and one need of course I need the payment type and then total sales and then I need to know how much the customer paid and should be like that and keep it in the menu and that's all so you can change the uh, you can change the icons if you would like so let's say here I'm payments anything here um, let's say um, I use this dollar sign all right so we're done for that then we have to go back to the behavior section and let's create um, like a button like you know like this okay so we have we have to create that so the first uh, the first thing we we need to do is in the sales uh, in the sales table we have to create um, update the um, 
what you call this uh, update the status okay so update status sorry um i think we have to create first the invoice number guys sorry um invoice number so every time there is a sales we need to copy whatever is the invoice number here there's an invoice number we need to copy this in the here okay at least the next sales it will be 200 to 2003 so we need to make an action for that okay so let create an action then where is it this action goes to sales and then cop copy invoice so i'm gonna just copy invoice number so here um, so we're gonna use as well the add new row to another table and then what is the target what is the target table the target table will be invoice and invoice number will be copied by invoice number that's all and also we don't want to display this so that's the first action that we create and also uh, since we we need to create also an action to to this so this is every time there is there is a settlement so settlement yes it's like going to the it's uh, going to the form so we need to create an action for that so we're gonna use the expression uh, or the formula which is linked to link to view so first how to create this um, this button we just close this okay let's go back to the UX and let's um, locate the the uh, payments form so here we have the payments form so this one I'm gonna just uh, go down to behavior and just copy this okay then I'm gonna create an action here and then a new action I wanted to display this in sales so this one will be payments let's say payments form so in the payments form uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just use go to another view within this app and then the target will be I mean, just paste it and then here we have to use uh, appearance display as primary then we can change the icon let's say uh, uh, payments do we have anything here let's say I'm gonna just use this for example and then we can apply the condition in the behavior so we don't want to show this we, we only want to show this if uh, if the cart let's say here we don't want to show now it's not showing if there is no order so we wanted to show only if there is an items on the cart so to do that so I'm gonna just this so is not is not blank so it's not blank um, select so uh, remember this portion here is a slice so we have to select the slice that we created so the slice name is cart if you remember we created a slice and then if the amount is subtotal is empty then uh, we don't want to show okay uh, sorry it's a sub total then I'm gonna just keep it true all right let's save
now let's see if the this that action is already there okay as you can see there is already an action here so this is a payments form so once you click this but we still need to have a confirmation because we don't want the user or you you just accidentally click this and goes to the settlement so we need first to have a confirmation so to add a confirmation you can just simply go to the needs confirmation and then we can keep it as a text let's say are you sure you can just put like that are you or you can put any confirmation here okay let's say all right let's go back to the app now we have this so once we click this uh, it goes directly to see there is are you sure okay then here we have the invoice number showing like this so we have to remove the uh, the in invoice we should not show the separator <clears throat> I think this is from the um, sales invoice number should be number okay save it all right so now we have this invoice number if i cancel it going back there so now the invoice number it's still so the payments table so you have to look at the payments table i don't know why there is uh amount paid should be keep it as a price i wanted to display it in dollar sign price then three digits and then currency let's say this and then i don't want to show the invoice number like this so it should be a number and then here we go i don't want to display that so it's showing like that all right let's wait um then uh we have to go to the here once we cancel this one first payments form now we have this if you don't want to edit this you can apply an editable if so payment type payment type should be not price we have to adjust as well the payment type so here the payment type let's say i have just two types of payment i have just cash and i have just card that's all i have <clears throat> very simple and then date and time i would like to keep it as automatic so auto compute it's already there so i don't want to edit this so i can just simply put is blank spank this and then copy this and also time i don't want to then auto compute it should be time now all right date should be all right let's go back all right so payment type it's here cash and then amount paid it's here let's say the total will be 220 and the change should be showing here like that okay so you can also put some um, valid if in the amount paid let's say valid if if the total amount is equal or more than to the total sales so we can do that here in the valid if you can also apply here so let's say here in the valid if in the total amount you will not accept any payments if the 
if the payment is less is less than the uh, less than the amount which is a uh, customer pay so in the amount paid we can apply a uh, data validity so let's say I'm gonna just use this is more than or equals to total sales so uh, not invoice number should be total sales here we go and then let's try if um, all right okay so now it's if you go here payments form then so the total sales is 15 and let's say customer paid cash and he pays 14 only it doesn't uh, it's invalid entry and also you can customize the the warnings in data validity the invalid error let's say you can put anything here any text you would like or you can apply as well an expression all right um, then what we're gonna do is uh, we have to create so like a PDF for this and also we need to establish a child and uh, child table in the payments tape in the payments so this is will be the parent table and then um, the sales will be the child records all right so let's go to the sales so in the sales guys let's go back to the invoice here so in the sales there is what we call an invoice number there i put we have to keep it as a reference type here and then in the reference type what is the source table so the source table is payment and tick this one okay and keep it as a reference so okay what happened okay there's an error here it's saying uh, in the max invoice does not match column type okay does it match column type in know what's going on okay So let's go back to the payment make sure that the payment the invoice number is also a number yep yeah this is correct it's an invoice this is the parent table which is the invoice number and then this should be this should be the key column it should be okay so take note in payments the key column is an invoice number yeah all right now it fixes the issue then since we need to create a pdf in this in the in payments table we have to create the pdf name here so i'm gonna add a virtual column here and then i'm gonna just name it let's say file and then in the file what we're gonna do is we're gonna use concatenate this is the first step of creating a PDF so our receipts this time we are creating the receipts let's say invoice number only invoice number guys that's all if you have let's say uh, a version so let's say a change counter let's say if you wanted to allow edits in this POS you can do as well so we can have a um, apply for the ch uh, change counter version but in this example I don't want to allow edits so let's because if I um, me so let's make it very simple so this one is dot PDF and then keep it as a text here all right now let's create our automation so in the automation guys is we need to go to the automation here 
and let's create the PDF automation. So new boot, create a custom boot. So this one is, let's say this is a receipt. Then which table we would like to trigger this? Configure event, custom event. Let's say I'm gonna just name this receipt event. And then I would like only to trigger this depending on the app setup if you wanted to allow edits and update. So in this uh, currently I'm, I'm using is only ads. So only add. Then I'm going to trigger this in the payments and without and then without any conditions. Then we're going to add a new step. So the new step will be creating a PDF guys. So let's create custom step PDF. Let's say this one here, receipt. All right. And here we have to choose create a file. Okay, so create a file. What is the format template? So I'm going to just create, create here. And then depending on the uh, size of the of your receipts and uh, we can uh, configure the size of the receipts and in this uh, file name prefix we can use the um, invoice number only since we are not allowing any edits so i'm gonna just put invoice number here since this is unique all right and then I'm going to disable the time stop. Then what is the orientation, page orientation? Do you want portrait or landscape? So let's say I am need a portrait and then attachments page size. Let's say you have a thermal printer. So we're going to create a custom um, attachment. And then what is the attachment page height? Let's say this is in millimeter. Let's say I want to use a standard normal thermal printer. Let's say I'm, I would like to have it's 400 since it's a continuous paper then the size is 80 all right so then uh, what we're going to do next is since we already created the pdf we have to add a process called uh, copy the invoice number so once it's once the pdf is created i need to uh, copy the invoice number custom step so this one copy invoice uh, remember here once the transaction is finished this um, in the payments the invoice number I would like to copy it here so that's the purpose of that so copy invoice number then run a data action and then here we have to create um, a copy invoice number series so here in the invoice number, we have to select here, add row to under table using the value of this row. Give me a second. Payments. Give me a second. I think I'm... Um, okay, let's review. Receipts. Okay. Copy invoice number, invoice number, then no add new row, invoice, then here I need to copy the invoice number only. So here invoice number, that's all. Okay, so add new row to another table and then invoice, invoice number. And then what we're going to do next is since we already copy the invoice number, we have to update the status of the app. So if you go back here, uh, here we have the sales, we have the status, it's keep empty, right? And also in our table, if you go to the sales table, um, where is the sales table? here this is a text type this is an empty okay so we have to put something here let's say I want to put uh, any text 
uh, let's say paid I'm gonna just use paid uh, okay so we have to copy and update the status guys but uh, we cannot do that because we need to create first an action in the in the sale so where is it I'm gonna just save it first and let's create first an action which is uh, updating the status give me a second okay let's go to the behavior create an action because if you are if we will not do that once we save for example this one you're adding items once we save uh, this should be the cart should be cleared okay so it goes like that for example so the cart it should be clear so that's the that's the purpose of this action so we have to create an action called um, update status and this action will be from the sales from the uh, from the cart here so whenever there is a f uh, once you settle everything we need to update the status in order for this cart to become empty as you know in the slice this is the row filter condition that we use if the status is blank so meaning if this is all the items are here the status are blank then once we close we need to put something on the status so that the cart will be empty for the next customer so we have to do that action here the status um not the items it will be from the sales and then status let's say i would like to put it as paid only very simple and then i don't want to display it do not display okay i'm gonna just save it first then since we are um, triggering the receipts in in the payments uh, in the payments uh, table so we need to trigger the update status in the payments table uh, in order to trigger that update status so we have to create an action called execute an action on a set of on a set of uh, set of rows so new action again guys i know there are so many actions involved in this uh, uh, sample pos i hope you are following me so i'm gonna just uh, trigger update so i'm gonna just name like that and payments table and what is the execute an action on a set of rows then what is the reference table so the reference table is the sales and reference action we created update status correct and then what we're going to do here in a reference row uh, if you're using a execute an action a set of rows i already uploaded it in my previous video you can just simply use the select expression select what is the uh, table the table is sales we are now working with sales okay sales and then what is the key column in sales the key column in sales is uh, not not this the key column is id so id and then we're gonna use um this row this row that invoice number is equals to the invoice number all right and it should be good okay what's going on oh, here okay so so take note the reference action is a uh, reference row expression is based on this sales table all right based on the sales table and this uh, reference action once we're done for that appearance uh, we just keep it do not display and then we have to add it in our automation since we already have that then we can go back to the automation and scroll down that is this is the last step so we already created the receipt and then we copy the series of the invoice 
then the last one will be updating this status so we have add step then custom step update status so we already created a behavior action so we just need to trigger it so to trigger it we can just uh, run data action and select trigger update status and it should be good So we are all set for that. We have to review the receipts. So guys, make sure the size is here. The size of the receipt is a custom. We need to also to um, to change it. So uh, the default size here is like this. But if you have an extension, I already downloaded the extension page sizer. You can just uh, set page sizer. And then we can adjust change it to millimeter so height will be uh, width will be 80 and the height will be 400 make sure it's uh, also the same the same in your app sheet settings here okay so this is the uh, this is a standard uh, restaurant or or and then you can just rearrange this I don't want to go through all of this you can just rearrange here and format your receipts and that's it I'm going to save it. I'm going to just delete some of it. And this is to test. <clears throat> All right. So I'm just make sure that we don't have any entries. All right. All right. Then, since we are creating a receipts, we need to link it, right? So now let's refresh and, uh, and try if the system is working. All right, I know it's long now. It's one hour and 12 minutes. So let's see. Apple, let's say two. So 56, banana, let's say two. Orange, let's see, two. Okay, just additional guys, since you have a multiple items here, make sure that uh, you are using the start and end description. I mean, uh, this is a start and end statement okay so let's say i'm gonna just include this i'm gonna just delete all of this and okay i'm gonna just put here the expression so in order to have a multiple items on the list you have to use this um um Let's say I'm going to insert a table here. Table, let's say, three tables only. Let's say four. Uh, let's say page setup. I don't want to have a margin. zero okay so I'm going just to set up like this for you to sh uh, to show you how you can add this in a, how you can uh, add the multiple items in a receipt so make sure you use the start expression so start I'm gonna just the it's too much big okay, okay. so here you have to make sure you, you, you use this start. Then what is the related columns in the payments? So in the payments, this is where you're triggering the, um, the PDF. So related sales. So this is a ref rows. So I can include that. Related sales. I'm going to just zoom it a little bit for you to see. Okay, related sales. Okay, so what is, let's say you wanted to display here your items. So you can put here items. So here we can put like that. Item, item name, the name of the column. 
or let's say item item ID okay item let's say item number and here we're gonna put here the too much big maybe if five will work and here we're gonna put the item name and here and here we're gonna to put let's say the uh, unit price so we're gonna put here unit 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 price and then here we're gonna have let's say whatever if there is a total amount you can put the total amount yeah let's say this is the subtotal and this is will be let's say this is the sub total then also you can apply let's say end here end so this is how you um, you apply a start and end uh, uh, expression yeah then you can uh, maybe put insert one table there let's say you want to put the total amount here so this is up to you how you how you set up your receipt so let's see here the uh, total sales so this is the total sales okay so this is the total sales for example so the important thing here so this is how to put it all in one uh, in all the multiple items i'm gonna just uh, do do like that i don't want to go through with all this receipt because it uh formatting a receipt will take time all right so i show you the expression uh, of start and end expression yeah so this is how you're gonna use to test if you have any errors in your in your pdf you can actually go here to the automation and then test this if you do not see any errors so meaning it's correct so since we don't have a data we don't have an option to test now let's try to add the i think we are adding a we're adding now a data we're adding a now there now there is an items here we added let's try so sales payments form payment type cash for example let's say so this is all the items that we order so total amount is sales let's say customer paid only 20 and system will not accept should be more or equals and there's a change of four dollars and then this file we don't want to we don't want to show this so because this is like a pdf name so view columns and then we can just don't show this one and save all right and then once you save we need to create actually a link to the receipts so let's see so here it doesn't trigger the update so here as you can see in our sales it's going to be paid okay it's paid and then it updates the invoice number which is correct and then the items become zero here so when we go back there this should uh, once we it should be remove the items here because that will be for the next customer so i'm not sure why it's like that so is blank status this should be removed actually let me just refresh it see i'm sorry we need to refresh it only now it's removed so we need to we need to have like an action once we save the payments um it goes to the receipts and also goes refresh the app 
in order for the system to refresh to remove the items here. So the first thing we need to do first is we need to create an action or uh, we need actually to find the receipts first. So we already created the receipt, but where is it? Okay, so we have to create here a new table and then select Google Drive, collection of files, then um, app sheet and locate that app. So my app name is, I think this is the version. I think this is the version that we have. Yeah, this is the one. But this is empty. I think, um, let me see again. Data. I think this is the one. Okay, this is the one. So files. Select. It's empty. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so app sheet, data, then this one, select, double click, and I this is the files, okay? So the files will be there, select, and then I'm going to just name it as, let's say, files, keep it like that, or receipts, receipts with S. So uh, what I'm doing now is I'm going to link the receipt from the Google Drive link to the app sheet app. So in the receipts, guys, we all we have to do is I don't want to display all of this because I just need to um, get the receipt link. So file, I'm going to keep it as a text and path, I'm going to keep, I mean, path, I will keep it as a file and I'm going to create a view for that. And the uh, new view will be keep it in reference. And then this is, let's say, receipt. Then um, I'm going to keep it, let's say, anything actually. We can keep it in a table view or whatever view we, we would like. And choose the receipts. And then uh, in the detail, Column order, we just need to see the path only. That's all. And then receipt details, we only need to see the path. And that's all. I don't need the slideshow, should be centered. And we have to create a uh, behavior here. There is an app view link here. So uh, we now we are linking the PDF, so we have to create an action to link the PDF, guys. So to link the PDF is uh, we need to go uh, create an action called uh, what you call this. Go to another view within this app. Then let's say um, view receipt. Then I copy the app link, so I can just paste it like that. And then here. We have to uh, we have to force the app to sync. So in order to uh, to force the app to sync, in order for this um, window to become empty, we don't want to keep refresh refresh, right? So we have to force the app to sync. So now we have to use the we have to include something here. So I I will include uh, a force sync expression which is and. Then I'm going to use and. This is a concatenate expression actually. At. So this is the key to force the app to sync. Then, then another and. Then encode URL. Then now plus one. So this, this last part here. This is the key to force the app to sync. Okay, and also we don't want to display this. Do not display. And what we're gonna do, guys, uh, whenever the user save the payments, you know here, if you add something, when the user save this, I want them to go to that 
receipts so that's the purpose of this so we go to the ux and then um, we have to go to the uh, locate the f which is the payments form payments form payments form payments form yep finish view i'll just keep it pos here in the behavior there is here it's not there yet wait yeah view no it should be payments yeah sorry that's why go back there and behavior view receipt so every time the user save it directs them to uh, directs them to uh, what you call this uh, directs them to the to the PDF Give me a second okay so view receipt and sorry uh, I think I I wrong it <laughs> view receipt okay not this we don't, we're not yet done for this expression guys I just realized that I did wrong here <laughs> so we're gonna use link to filtered view receipts detail okay so we have to in include as well the uh, here we're in uh, this row I hope you're following me you you're not lost this row that file you remember we created a file in the payments like a virtual column here so this is the use of this file is equals to this uh, to the file the file is this is the file for uh, in the receipts here then save should be all good so this is the link to view receipts so whenever the user uh, save it goes directly to the receipt and this is the expression that I use this data this sort of file is equals to file now the moments of truth I'm gonna just uh, uh, add some I'm gonna add new data and see if this app works yeah I hope it works <laughs> all right let's say this is orange banana let's say I have two I uh, I have two items only then I have payments form okay payment type let's say cash and amount paid so the total amount is 15 let's say the amount paid is 15 and then all right and then save once I save it's as you can see it uh, forces the app to sync and the view should be the receipts we'll see so we I added two items so it's it's the receipt should pr produce as well two items all right as you can see there is a receipt here once we click and go to the receipt as you can see it's here so we just need to arrange the receipts properly as you can see this is the orange the dollars and let's see like all right so this is the receipt and I uploaded the receipt so the size will be custom page height is 400 and then page width is 80 and I'm using custom margin and when you view the receipts so the size of the receipt as well is 80 by 400 since there is no option for 80 by 400 in this um, uh, Google Docs all you have to do is just download the page sizer set page sizer and then um, choose the millimeters so it's 80 by 40 and then apply and then in order to populate the 
the multiple items in your receipt i'm just going to show you you use the start and end statement here so start related sales this is the virtual column which is you can find in your payments if you go here related sales this is the uh, parent record or the parent table the quantity unit price and you should put by this end and let's try our uh, newly built uh, POS system which is for single user so let's try so adding this one save this save and this save it goes to payments form payments form receipt number is automatically generated and here is the total sales customer let's say paid 17 system will not accept let's say 20 and you have a change of two once you save the user i mean the the app will go directly to the receipts All right, here's the invoice number and the receipts. You click that and you can print if you have a thermal printer. So the thermal printer is uh, it's set to 80 by 400. So this is my receipt. And as you can see, it's uh, recorded here, the time and then total amount and then the change as well. So let's try one more time. And where is it? And also you can see also the all the transactions you have here for today so this is the uh, receipt now i mean invoice number 008 and it's here so you can review the transaction here let's add one more time let's say only one item okay so the next invoice number should be 009 amount paid is three and save and this is how you create your uh, very own uh, POS system, which is only for single user. Please take note that. So let's see. Okay. And here we go. This is the only one item. And you can also view this transaction in the payments, which is this one i have only one transaction so if you learned something in this video don't forget to subscribe or comment if you have any questions and thank you so much for watching and see you next time in my next video